Hello, Screamer, and welcome back to Scream Stream, your weekly spoiler-free guide to horror entertainment. I'm James Gass. If you're new to the show, what I do is review a horror movie from one of the various streaming services. Spoiler-free, of course. I also cover horror news, new releases of the week, and sometimes a video game or two. Scream Stream is available wherever podcasts are served, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and many more. If you want to hear the original run of Scream Stream, head over to patreon.com slash screamstream to listen to those every week for free. So I took a break off from Scream Stream for about a week, and I do apologize if, if that upset you at all. I'm sure it did not, but I am back, and I'm actually thinking about changing up the uh, schedule, the release schedule. Normally, I okay, so I changed my recording schedule. Now I'm thinking about changing the release schedule to Fridays because uh, I think Friday is like that's the day that you're in movie watching mode and you want to know what to watch. And so I think releasing Scream Stream on a Friday when you're ready to watch something, that's probably more beneficial to you because if you listen to this show on Monday, by Friday you'll forget what I reviewed probably and then that makes this show pointless. So I'm thinking about changing it Friday. Let me know what you think. Hit me up on Twitter at James Gass uh, and let me know. But yeah, that's that's my thought process right now is, is moving the show release schedule to Fridays. I think it'll work, work out better. So for this episode, I am reviewing a, uh, a movie that I mentioned last week that just hit Netflix called Nails. And this is a 2017 film, Irish horror film. And this was written by Tom Abrams, Dennis Bartok, and directed by Dennis Bartok. Stars Shauna McDonald, Steve Wall, and Lee, Leah, or Lee? Maybe it's Lee. Lee, yeah, we'll go with Lee. Lee McNamara. And for a brief plot synopsis, paralyzed after a terrible accident, Dana struggles to regain her life and family when she encounters a malevolent ghost in her hospital room. So right off the bat, acting was good. I enjoyed the acting. Uh, and the cinematography was great. All the shots were nice. There were actually it's like some really cool uh, camera ve- reveals. So like if you're looking at a character, the camera moves a little bit or the moves a little bit while the uh, actor moves and then you get a reveal of the ghost. There's some really nice clever ones in there. I thought they were uh, extremely effective with like like semi jump scares. Um, kind of things. So cinematography was really good. I loved the lighting. Uh, everything had uh, a nice spooky look to it. Very nice use of shadows. Uh, the color was good. Very like hospital-like. And even though this was a rundown hospital, they made it kind of feel um, like a little more modern. Um, but it, it looked like your typical hospital that was starting to fall apart. And I like the way they use color in that to kind of give it that hospital feel. You know what I mean? Like like blues and greens um, and a little bit of gray here and there. Uh, it looked, looked really nice. So let's get right to the story. So the story opens up with a man injecting a little girl and clipping her fingernails. And we don't really know what's going on, but it's creepy as hell. Very disturbing. <laughs> And that kind of sets the tone for the entire film. Very disturbing. So after that, we see Dana uh, get up out of bed, put on her like running clothes. And I guess we have to assume that she's like uh, some kind of runner or something. And she gets to the street to cross it. And as soon as she crosses it, she gets hit by a car. Uh, And little known fact, I was hit by a car when I was about 10 years old. It does not feel good. But in this film... She took it a whole lot harder than I did. Like this thing just really tore her up. So she gets hit by a car and is taken to the hospital. And she has like this breathing tube inserted into her neck. Her head's all messed up. Uh, She can't breathe on her own. Her arm is, is all like, like there's, there's like this, like screws into her arm to keep her arm together. Man, she is torn up from this car accident. So she can't really move. Uh, which kind of plays into the whole scare factor of the film. Uh, And so she notices, or one night she kind of hears somebody in her room, and she thinks somebody's watching her, but she's really not sure because she couldn't really see. 
and she's trying to tell the hospital staff or the guy, um, Trevor, who is like her nurse, that's her nurse. And he doesn't really believe her, but he believes like maybe she could have seen something, but most likely it was an anxiety attack that she had. Uh, so this goes on for several nights. And each time it happens, it gets worse. So they had security cameras installed so that they could see whatever. Things still happen. Nobody sees it. And without giving too much away from here on out, there is just a lot of suspense in the film. And to see the ghost, like the first few times, is like super creepy. And the way this thing looks is is. Think of like a super scary version of Marilyn Manson. And that's what you have here. Just extremely creepy. And something that I liked about this film, and I don't know if this is with most foreign films. And when I mean foreign, when I say foreign films, I mean non US horror films. There's what I call a Scooby Doo plot effect. Where in Scooby Doo, the entire point of the episode is to find out who the ghost is, right? And it always turns out to be human, so it's not scary. In horror films, I feel like they are all starting to suffer from the Scooby-Doo effect, where the entire point of the movie is to find out who the ghost is, and then once you find out, it's not scary anymore. Foreign films, foreign horror, kind of takes a different approach to the Scooby-Doo effect, where in this one in particular, we already find out who the ghost is like halfway through the film. Now it's just... What is this ghost going to do to us to make our lives a living hell? And that's where the scare factor comes in. And I thought it had a really nice scare factor. I thought it had the right amount of jump scares. It had the right amount of like just super intense moments. I really liked the film. I thought it was it was like one of the creepiest films that I've seen in a while. And one of the... I don't want to say like disturbing as in, oh, that film disturbed me, but it was disturbing in a sense that I felt uneasy watching it. You know what I mean? Like I, I felt tense throughout the whole thing. However, the third act, I felt it did start to kind of unravel a little bit. It went from like these super creepy, quick views of the ghost to flat out, here's the ghost, and he's going to do this. Oh, here's the ghost, and he's going to do this thing again. And here's the ghost, and he's going to do this again. And it kind of gets repetitive, and it feels a little sloppy. It's a sloppy way of wrapping up the story, but it was still good. I mean, the ending was still satisfying uh, as far as, like, foreign film. Foreign films never end on a happy note, and... It was still satisfying in that sense. Uh, I, I was happy with the ending. Uh, so overall, the film was actually really good. It was one of the better horror films I've seen recently. Uh, with the exception of like the super low budget film that I mentioned called Bad Ben. I'm going to review that next week, by the way. I have to watch the other two because it is like a trilogy. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed the film a lot. I thought it was great. It is on Netflix, and if you haven't seen it, I recommend that you check it out. It is under an hour and a half. I think it was like an hour and 21 minutes long or something, and that includes the credits. So really good film, really tense film. I love the way it was shot. Uh, I love the color. I love the use of shadows, the tense moments, the jump scares, all that good stuff. If I have to give it a star review, I would probably give this like a 3.25 out of 5, and that's pretty good. Think about it, you know, we're, we're talking five stars, 3.25 out of five. So there you go. There's my review of Nails. Uh, check it out. It is available now on Netflix. And there's not, you know, man, it's really hard to keep up with streaming releases. So this week I'm kind of having to just wing it a little bit. Uh, as I mentioned a couple weeks ago, the site that I normally use to keep track of, of new stuff on Netflix, it's all out of whack. They're putting stuff up there that's not really out on, on U.S. Netflix. It might be out on a foreign Netflix. So I'm really not sure what's available uh, as far as new stuff. Now, I saw that they released this show called 
Wild Wild Country, and I think it's sort of, I don't know if it's like thriller or horror, but that's kind of what I've heard. Um, also, there's this TV show on uh, Netflix just released called Requiem. This thing looks creepy AF, and I might check that out. But yeah, if you go to like their recently added or their new releases, it doesn't really give you like a list of here's the new releases because a lot of stuff that I'm seeing on this page this has been out for a while. Uh, so it, it's really hard just to tell what's been newly added. Uh, on Amazon, however, I like Amazon because you can actually sort through the stuff. So if you go to departments and then you go to uh, Prime Video, included with Prime, and then if you scroll down to uh, movie genres and go to the horror section, and then in the top right corner, you can sort by newest arrivals. And this is kind of how you get what's new on Amazon. And just recently added is The Citadel. This, I think this was an Irish horror film too. And I think I reviewed this on the first one of Scream Stream. Th that was an excellent film. And I would recommend that. Uh, also, Come Out and Play. I think I've heard some good things about that. Uh, Lake Nowhere, I've heard some good things about. Hellmouth is out. The Lazarus Effect is now on Amazon Prime. I think it's also on Netflix. I saw that uh, two weeks ago during spring break. And I think I do want to review that. I haven't done it yet because I just saw, like last week, another podcast did a review of it. Uh, so I didn't want to kind of go right behind them and then do a review because I didn't want to look like I was trying to copy them. But I do want to review that one in the future. And then it has Mark Duplass in it. And uh, the dude from American Horror Story, the, the young curly-headed dude, I can't remember his name. But he's in that one as well. Also, um, Donald Glover is in that. Uh, also, I like him. He's a really good actor, and I've been following his work for a while, uh, and I do like this stuff that he's been doing. Uh, and then also, I was so I was so excited to see this on Amazon. If you remember, a couple weeks ago, I was talking about uh, the new stuff on Shutter, and I said uh, a haunting in in Connecticut and a haunting in Georgia. Uh, those were the the movies that were made about those ghost stories, and I mentioned that the documentary series called A Haunting, uh, which comes on Destination America, I think now, uh, they did uh, two one-hour specials in 2002 on those two stories. Those two episodes are now available on Amazon Prime, and I recommend that you go and watch those things. As soon as you get done listening to this podcast, you need to go watch those because they are great. They're only, I'm sorry, they're an hour and a half. You need to go watch them. So like on, on TV, there are two hours, but they're an hour and a half. Uh, I will put links to them in the show notes for this episode. They, uh, they're they cheesy, but they tell the actual story of what happened to the family who moved into the uh, home in Connecticut and what happened to the family who moved into the home in Georgia. Uh, great documentaries. Uh, I wish I could find... You know, actually, I do have, I think I still have most of those episodes on DVD back in the day when I used to get DVDs from Netflix and then I'd burn copies of them. Shh, don't tell anybody. Uh, but I think I still have all those episodes. I have to look for them. Uh, but great show, great series. I wish I could watch again, but I don't have Destination America because I only have basic cable. Uh, but yeah, go and check those out. Like I said, I will put links to those in the description for this episode. All right, so new on Shudder for like the past couple weeks, we have a few things. Uh, Pod, which is an alien horror film. Uh, Rift, not sure what that is. Cold Hell, which is a Shudder exclusive. The Bay, that is a found footage film that I did, that I know for sure I reviewed on the original run of Scream Stream. Excellent, excellent found footage movie. I cannot highly recommend, or I cannot recommend it enough. Uh, bag boy, lover boy, that's a new one on me. Uh, and yeah, that's it. It, what, what? I've noticed that there are less and less horror films coming to streaming these days. And I don't know why that is. But yeah, th there's not a whole lot of new stuff out. And it's been like two weeks since I've done a show or a whole week. Yeah, it's been like a whole week since I've done a show. Not a whole lot of new stuff out which kind of makes me sad. I wish I knew what was new on Netflix. If there is a service or a website that you know or that you know of 
that keeps up with these releases to Netflix, please let me know and I will talk about it in the show and uh, use that for the times that I need to know when stuff is new on Netflix. Because right now, I'm just not seeing a whole lot. And that kind of saddens me. Oh, one thing that I did forget to mention uh, that is back on Netflix. Uh, the Santa, Clari Santa Clarita Diet uh, Season 2 is on Netflix. If you haven't seen that show, it's hilarious. But, I mean, it's got its roots in horror uh, because the wife is a zombie, Drew, played by Drew Barry Barrymore. And the husband tries to figure out how to keep her alive and not let everybody else know that she's a zombie at the same time. Uh, it is a hilarious show. I loved season one and season two is back on uh, and I cannot wait to start watching that one. Uh, Lynn Shea is set to co-star in the Grudge remake from uh, Nicholas Pesquet. Pesquet? Pesci? Pesquet. P-S-C-E. Pesquet. That we'll go with that. Uh, I don't know why we need a grudge remake. Why do we keep getting remakes? I don't I don't understand. Stop doing remake remakes. We didn't need a remake of that. It oh man, that's just so frustrating when you see oh Lin Shay's involved in a new horror film. Oh, it's a remake. Great. Uh can we please get some more original uh original content? Thanks. Oh, also, uh, Zach Baggins, uh, I hate even saying the guy's name, Zach Baggins documentary film Demon House is now out. I don't know if it's out on in theaters or if it's out on, oh yeah, it's out on, you can rent it uh, for like $6.99, I think on Amazon. But this is where the woman claimed that her house was infiltrated by demons, so Zach Baggins bought the bought the house and did his uh, investigation there and then decided that nobody should live in the house and had it destroyed. But the film is all about him investigating the house. I hate this guy. Okay. The guy on multiple occasions has been revealed to be a fraud. He's a douchebag to begin with. I mean, the guy's just a jerk. I'm sorry. I don't like him. I didn't like his show. I thought he's an extremely disrespectful person uh, when it comes to spirits and ghosts. If you believe in that sort of thing, I do not. But still, you shouldn't be dis disrespectful the way that he is. Uh, and he deserves whatever bad karma he gets. I cannot stand this guy. I do not plan on watching this documentary. But if you want to watch it and report back to me on how it was, please do so. That's all I got to say about Zach Baggins and his documentary. I'm sorry. I can't stand the guy. That's just the way it is. Night Flyers, uh, which is a sci-fi horror series uh, based on George R.R. R. Martin's book is coming to sci-fi. I wish I had sci-fi because this seems really interesting and I love Game of Thrones and I'm pretty sure this is going to be amazing as well. I'll probably have to wait till it comes out on like DVD or, or rental or something. Um, but it looks really good. I've heard a lot of good talk about it, I should say. I've heard the book was excellent. So I'm excited to see the series. They There is a like a, a first look sci-fi release, like a first look thing. If you go to their YouTube channel, um, check it out. It I'm excited. I cannot wait to see this. Uh, and that's all there is for news that I thought was like newsworthy enough to talk about on the show. Um, so there you go. There is news, new releases, and all that good stuff. So that's it. That's going to do it for this week's episode of Scream Stream. Next week, I am going to review Bad Ben. I'm probably going to review Bad Ben and the sequels. So make sure that you have Amazon Prime and that you go and watch those films. They are free on Amazon Prime as long as you have that service, which you should probably have it anyway. Uh, because you get free two-day shipping and a crap ton of of streaming content, like a ton of it. And I do recommend Amazon. They don't sponsor the show. I don't get paid by them. I just recommend the service. Go check it out. It's like 100 bucks a year, I think. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend Amazon Prime. And while you're there, watch Bad Ben and the sequels, Better Ben and Steelmanville Road. That is That's the second one. This is the backstory to Bad Ben. And then the third film is called Batter Ben. 
So go watch all three of those films, and I'll talk about them next week. So if you'd like to keep up with me outside of the podcast, you can do so at ScreenPod.com, where you can find links to all of my social profiles. Subscribe to the podcast via your favorite podcatcher, like Apple Podcast and Spotify. And get the show notes for each episode. If you have a movie that you want me to review on the show, hit me up on Twitter, at James Gass, or go to ScreenPod.com slash contact, fill out the form, send me an email, and let me know about a film that you want me to review or want to know my thoughts on. And finally, Music Ease for Scream Stream was created by Kevin McLeod over at Incompetech.com. Until next week, I'm James Gass saying, if it was real, the cameraman would be dead too. Good night. Thank you.